Hello, and welcome back to another stealth adventure. A lot of you really liked when I did this for Valhalla, and asked that I do it for the rest of the games in the series, because you all want to see me suffer. Well fine, because next up is the one, the only, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now, going into this, I knew the deal. Of course, it's an RPG game, so like Valhalla, there's going to be quite a bit of forced combat sections, especially in the beginning, where I'll have no choice but to fight, and stealth won't be a possibility. However, what was quite pleasantly surprising is, I had more opportunities to use stealth and feel like an assassin in Odyssey than I did in that entire Valhalla video, which is a bit ironic, because Valhalla was supposed to be the game that brought back all these old-school AC stealth mechanics, and yet Yet in the first two and a half hours of that game, you get maybe three or four stealth opportunities. So, say what you will about Odyssey, but at least there was an ample amount of opportunity for stealth, which made the entire concept of this video a lot more fun. And on that note, this is where our story begins. Can a demigod become an assassin? And just how far will I get on this journey without being spotted? Now, despite what I just said, this journey actually starts as the movie 300, with some forced combat sections where you play as none other than Leonidas, because Ubisoft couldn't miss out on the opportunity to show 300 in a game set in ancient Greece. I'm genuinely curious if you had someone play the first few hours of this game, not knowing what the game is or the title, would they be able to guess it's Assassin's Creed? I don't know. Sure is interesting to think about, though. Anyways, you know how it goes. I put these Persian dogs in their place, this one massive guy started spouting generic villain dialogue. I will break so much for that. And then boom, we're into the modern day with Layla. It's always confused me a bit what exactly happened in the modern day between Origins and Odyssey. Anyways, I hook up to the Animus where I'm given a choice of difficulty, where of course I choose Nightmare because I'm either brave or an idiot. And ultimately, I choose to play as Alexios because last time I made a video on Odyssey, I chose Cassandra. So our goal here is to make Alexios, the demigod, into an assassin. Is it an impossible task? Ask. Yeah, actually it is, but we're gonna try anyway. You know how it goes, the previously known Sixth Sense from the previous AC games, also known as Eagle Vision, is now a literal eagle, and Alexios breaks the fourth wall by humming the game's soundtrack. These two lackeys pull up and sucker punch me, and this leads to our first forced combat encounter of the game. I am playing on Nightmare, but luckily this first fight isn't hard. Phoebe then shows up, as I've probably traumatized her by slicing these guys up but oh well. She has the audacity to eat my food, and then demands that I ask Zeus to bless her with an eagle. But little does she know that Zeus is long dead, courtesy of my boy Kratos. I'm then given a choice whether I want to kill or spare Tweedledum and Tweedledumass. Normally I'd slaughter them without hesitation or mercy, but I figured if I can avoid a forced combat encounter, that may be for the best. So I let them live. I know, I know, I was disgusted with myself too. Phoebe tells me that Marcos wants to see me and that he's bought a vineyard, which supports my theory that Marcos is actually the evil mastermind of Odyssey. Not only does he constantly get Alexios into mortal danger, but nobody talks like this without being secretly insane. If Jar Jar Binks can be a Sith Lord, then Marcos can be some sort of evil god. Oh, what if he's Zeus or something? That, that would be awesome. Alexios needed to get dressed, and that's when I made an incredible discovery. Just like I did with Eivor in my last video, I can also have Alexios cosplay as Ezio. We were one step closer to converting the demigod to an assassin, as he now looked the part. And from this angle, with the beard, he kind of looks like Ezio from Brotherhood. Yeah, that's right, rejoice everybody, the Walmart Ezio has returned. Anyways, as I was making my way to Marcos, I decided to do some scouting ahead to make sure there were no enemies or mercenaries in my path, and it's a really good thing I did, because those idiots from earlier were hiding along the main road, setting up an ambush. This is what I get for being merciful for once in my life. I would have tried to kill them because, well, I wanted vengeance, but I wasn't too confident I could pull it off without being spotted, so I just decided to run around them. I finally made my way to Marcos, which 
which for all I know is actually the immortal Templar, Otso Berg. I couldn't prove it, but Ezio was on his trail. And in typical Templar fashion, Marcos doesn't have the money he owes me, and dares to ask me to go get it from a merchant in Sammy. Since the game has not yet given me an option to kill the Templar scum, I had no choice but to comply. However, before I could even leave, this random woman runs up to us and tells us that the little runt who ate my food earlier had been kidnapped. I saw it as well-earned karma, but the game apparently thought otherwise as I had to go and save her, which is where I came upon my first stealth opportunity. I made quick work of all the captors, as a true assassin would, and freed the food-stealing girl, where she proceeds to shout exposition at me and what we mean to each other, as Ezio has an anime flashback in the middle of the conversation of his days training with his father to be an assassin in Firenze. My dad threatens to eat Claudia for dinner, Dinner, which is a very dark plot twist that is played off as comedy, because this game is indeed funny. I'm then told that the mercenary Talos the Stone Fist is after me, he 100% named himself that, and I decide to keep him marked at all times, since the mercenaries in this game can be relentless, and if I'm not careful, he could find and spot me when I least expect it. And there was no chance of being able to assassinate him, since he is a level 5, and this game doesn't have guaranteed assassinations. That was surely going to make things difficult, and so I needed to make sure that I was the proper level for any future future stealth encounter. I then headed over to collect my debt from the merchant of Sammy. He actually had the nerve to refuse to pay to Ezio's face, so I smashed all of his merchandise until he complied. I could have killed him, I wanted to, but there was a guard nearby and I was worried I would be spotted if I did so. These people were lucky I was being so merciful today. I go back to catch up with Marcos, whom I've discovered has borrowed money from the Cyclops, my mortal enemy, so he could buy his vineyard. I'm telling you guys, Marcos is the real villain here, how do you not see it? He then randomly starts to talk about the time we met and the good old days, because we need some more exposition, where Alexios then has another anime flashback, showing how he washed up on the shores of Kefalonia and how he met Marcos, who looks the same age, I'm telling you, he's immortal. Don't come crying to me when Marcos is the main villain of Assassin's Creed Mirage, just know, I called it here first. Another person Marcos has screwed over then shows up, where he once again puts the responsibility of fixing it on my shoulders. The woman I'm supposed to help agrees to fix my bow as payment, but she's rather rude about it, so I quickly put her in her place. Alexi Ezio is not a man to be trifled with. I headed out to the bandit camp where they had stolen the woman's wood, which is where I faced my first real test in stealth. My approach to not being spotted for as long as possible was very similar to Valhalla. Just take things slow, be patient, and utilize the cover and whistle mechanics as much as possible. Luckily, the detection system in this game is a bit more consistent, so I wasn't as worried about being insta-spotted from 13 miles away. And in Odyssey, you can also tag enemies with your eagle and do some recon, which was going to be very important for my stealth encounters. It's obviously much easier to maneuver and pick off targets when I can always see where they are relative to each other. And like I said, a good assassin is a patient one. So I slowly made my way through the camp, taking out guards one by one. Thankfully, they are all level 2, so I could one-shot assassinate all of them. And I breezed through the camp with relative ease. There were a few close calls. The detection meter filled up very quickly on nightmare difficulty. But nothing a trained assassin like myself couldn't handle. My mission was a success, and I returned the lumber to the woman, where she once again needed to be put in her place after having the gall to call me Marcos's assistant. Little did she know, I was only going along with Marcos's operations so that I could get to the bottom of his true identity, and when the time came, kill him and bring an end to his nefarious Templar schemes. But such a simple-minded person couldn't possibly understand the depths of my plan. I had a few skill points, so I put them into the assassin skill tree, because why wouldn't I? And the extra stealth damage was definitely going to be a lifesaver as I approached higher level enemies. I made my way back to Marcos, who once again has another terrible idea and tells me to steal the Cyclops' obsidian eye. How does nobody see this guy as the menace he is? No one realizes they're being fooled because they're too busy laughing at the fool. That's a quote 
quote from the great spy espionage movie, Cars 2. I head over to the Cyclops' house where Alexi Ezio makes the worst pun I've ever heard. Hello, I. I see you. <laughs> Because Assassin's Creed Odyssey is actually a comedy, in case you didn't know. Now, the Cyclops' house would be my most difficult challenge yet. Guards posted around every corner and level of the estate. The eye was located in a room that could only be accessed from the interior courtyard that so happened to be swarming with guards. My only chance was to be patient, wait for the guards' routes to shift, and kill as many wanderers at the back of the estate as I could. I hid the bodies as well. I was leaving nothing to chance. Luckily, a lot of the guards chose to go around the back and kept meeting my broken spear. What can I say, Ezio got bored of the hidden blade, I guess, whatever. It was a lot of waiting around and looking for the perfect opportunity, and then I found it. One of the guards left and the other turned his back. It was a split second moment, and the guard could have turned around at any moment and this video would be over, but I went for it. I jumped down and made my way into the house where I finally got the Cyclops' obsidian eye. Not gonna lie, an obsidian eye sounds very uncomfortable, but once I had it, I waited for the courtyard to clear, took out the last wandering guard, and made my way out of the estate, where I even managed to kill the captain on the way out. Another successful mission. I brought the eye back to this Malacca, where he, for the fifth or sixth time in an hour, cast me with another mission. Apparently, some soldiers arrived on the island in a fancy ship, and like every great host, I needed to murder the new guests. I had grown quite confident in my stealth kills at this point, and Alexi Ezio was well on his way to becoming a proper assassin. This mission should be much easier than the last. Not only are there far less enemies, but they are all automatically marked with gold icons and fairly spread out around the area. I air assassinated one with ease, made my way through this little building where... You guessed it, I made a critical error. I saw the enemy's silhouette through the wall and figured that I would be able to take out the guy in front of me without being seen. From the angle, it seemed like there was no way I would be able to be spotted from outside. This is where my overconfidence was my downfall. This whole playthrough, I had done such a good job at being patient and waiting for the perfect moment. At this moment, I saw a target in front of me and the assassin in my brain acted rashly. I was so bloodthirsty that I didn't take the the time to properly analyze the situation. Unlike the Valhalla video, this one was genuinely my fault. What can I say guys? I'm human. I'm sorry. I thought the Ezio robes made me an unstoppable assassin, but reality finally set in. You can't turn a demigod into an assassin. It's just not possible. If I was the real Ezio in this situation, I would have just used my poison darts or crossbow. I wouldn't have even needed to get up close and personal. But my bow wasn't strong enough to one-shot these enemies, so I had no choice but to go for the assassinations. In total, I made it about an hour and 15 minutes into the game without being spotted, which is about an hour less than how far I made it in Valhalla. But again, Odyssey allowed for a lot more stealth opportunities in its opening hours as opposed to Valhalla, which had lots of cutscenes and forced combat sections. So generally, I'd say even though it ended far sooner, I had a much better time doing this video for Odyssey. Who would have thought? But of course, next in line would be Origins, which should be even better for this kind of video, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Thanks for joining me on this adventure, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and considered subscribing to the channel if you're new. And other than that, have a great rest of your day, assassins.